You're watching MITV, McAllen Instructional Television. Hello and welcome to FYI. And today we're going to be talking about a serious subject. It's bully prevention. Now, this is a serious matter going on in schools throughout the country. We want to bring you up to date what we're doing here in McAllen ISD about that. Uh, we're going to give you tips about what the campuses are doing, uh, what tools we are using to empower students, and also what you as a parent uh, can do if uh, you want to help prevent bullying. Uh, my guest is Jesus Martinez. He is a prevention intervention specialist with McAllen ISD, and uh, his program oversees sees the entire bully prevention program throughout McAllen ISD and does all the training for everyone and Jesus thank you for coming on today and I guess before we we go too much further let's first explain what is bullying because I know different people have different yes, concepts of, of that well first thank you Mark for inviting me here to be able to mm -hmm. educate the parents regarding bullying and what we're doing as a as a district parents um, bullying we, to describe bullying we look at certain elements one element is we're looking at an aggressive behavior now the aggressive behavior can either be written, it can be verbal, it can be posted on the social media. We're also looking for that behavior to be repetitive. It has to occur more than once. And the other thing we're looking for, we're looking for an imbalance of power that affects the student who's being bullied when it comes to the school setting. This is what we look at as a school district to be able to identify if this is being considered to be considered bullying. Okay, and um, also I know a big aspect uh, today in bullying, something we didn't have to yes. deal with when we were kids was a cyber bullying. This is stuff that goes on on the internet. What exactly is cyber bullying? Cyber bullying is something newer that's been coming your, because your traditional form of bullying was usually your physical and your verbal mm -hmm. bullying and now we have something that's called cyber bullying. The difference with the bullying as opposed to cyber bullying, years ago bullying or traditional bullying happened in school playground, happened in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It would stay there. When the bell would ring, the kid could go home and he felt comfortable, he felt safe. But cyberbullying even follows you home. As soon as the kid opens up his Facebook account, as soon as he opens up his any type of app, he can still be ridiculed and be made fun of even when he's at home. Mm -hmm. So it follows you home as opposed to the traditional bullying which stay at the school grounds. And, and I think you were telling me that uh, a lot of kids uh, they don't stop and think about the hurt they might be causing. They might think it's fun at first. They might think it's fun, mm -hmm. plus it's much easier because you don't see the individual. Mm -hmm. Like with your traditional bullying, you can see the reaction, you can see the pain that you're causing the individual. When it comes to cyberbullying, it makes it that much more easier to be able to post and say hurtful things. On top of that, other kids can join in on that and, and, and make it and compile the situation to make it worse. Yeah, and I, I think you were um, telling me that sometimes kids uh, who join in don't even know who the victim is. They just, it just seems like a fun thing to do and they're not thinking. And you're right, there's yeah. been many situations or many instances where individuals don't even know, but because their friend did it and because their friend said something, they thought mm -hmm. it was easy just to poke fun and make a simple innocent statement in their eyes, but in the, at the same time it's something very demeaning and hurtful to the individual okay. that they're directing these terrible comments to. Well, well that takes us over to uh, bully prevention yes. and some tips there. Uh, and, uh, we have some written down here like stop it before it starts. Uh, t t what does that mean? Stop it before it starts is basically trying to get the kids in power to do something before it can get out of hand. Okay. Now there, there are many things parents can do, there are many things schools can do to address the situation. And as a school, we're trying to do everything because we've implemented a program called the Oveas Bullying Prevention mm -hmm. Program. Here what we're trying to do is we're trying to create, we're trying to change the school culture and the school climate. With this program, what we're trying to do is we're trying to empower students. We're trying to empower bystanders to be able to stand up and intervene when they do witness a possible situation of bullying occurring. Okay, and, um, in, and supervision, is, is that something going on at the campus? Supervision is something that the campuses are doing. They're more aware of what's actually going on. And examples of supervision is we're trying to train staff to be, in, to be um, strategically placed in areas where bullying is more often occurring. For example, the recess, the lunch area. So they're providing more supervision in those areas to be able to um, combat the bullying. Okay, and, and I know you've got... Uh, every uh, campus now has a, an anti-bullying policy. Yes. Uh, not that those things were allowed before, but it now it's just kind of a, a stricter focus, and, I guess, on those things. And you're right. Mm -hmm. They did have these policies before, but the state has made them much more stronger. The mm -hmm. state is requiring the school district to have some sort of intervention program in place to assist the actual victim and the actual aggressor. And on top of that, the, you have to have a reporting system that parents feel free and students feel free to feel comfortable to report the bullying. Okay, and, and I think some of the other things we have, uh, we've had some, some uh, bully prevention rallies at some of the campuses. Tell us about that. 
the, the idea behind the bullying prevention rallies is, is, is a concept adopted from the OVA's bullying prevention program, what McAllen ISD is implementing. The idea behind that is to spread the word to the community that the campuses are doing something to deter bullying. Now that's one of the reasons behind that. We're also inviting parents, we're inviting community members into the school district so they can understand what we are doing to address the situation. And that's kind of, I guess that kind of brings everybody onto the same page, doesn't it? The adults understand, the parents understand what the campus is trying to do and maybe help reinforce that at home with the child? Definitely, definitely. And plus we're inviting the community because we know these students eventually are going are to go out into the community and we want to make sure we prepare them so in case they do foresee or a bullying does occur, they know what to do. Okay, very good. Our, our guest is uh, Jesus Martinez. He's a prevention intervention specialist with McAllen ISD. Our subject is bully prevention and we're going to talk about some specific ideas that you as a parent can implement at home right after this. You're watching FYI. Every day, kids witness bullying. Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. It's not his new group of friends, the video games, or the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss puts their graduation at risk. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back to FYI. I'm Mark May. We're talking about bully prevention today. And we're going to talk about now what you as a parent can do at home. Uh, first of all, Jesus, uh, tell us what are some of the signs that maybe a parent can look for if uh, their child maybe is getting bullied at, at school, they don't know about it. What are some signs for them? And this is very important as a parent to pay close attention to your child. Some signs that you should look for as a parent is one that's pretty obvious is, of course, if the grades are beginning to lower. Mm -hmm. You should look at if your son is starting to complain of stomach aches, if he's starting to complain of certain illnesses that he pr previously never complained about, if he's starting to have some reoccurring nightmares, certain behaviors like that you should be pay very close attention to. I imagine if uh, your, your child generally has a, a, a good disposition towards school, but then maybe that mood changes, he doesn't want to go to school anymore, some of those things? And you highlighted mood changes are something that you need to play, pay very close attention to. And especially when it comes to the middle school because it's very subtle, so sometimes parents tend to oversee that. In, in elementary, mm -hmm. you, can, you can find it. Mm -hmm. In the high school and the middle schools, they're very subtle, so as a parent, sometimes we oversee that subtle change in our, son, in our, okay. in the, in our kids. And, and I imagine with older kids, I, I know a lot of times they're kind of reluctant to tell mm -hmm. uh, their parents up front, but maybe what, what's a good way for a parent uh, to get that conversation started a little bit. And I think we have some yes, tips on those. As a parent, mm -hmm. communication is vital. Mm -hmm. Listening to your son or daughter when they come up to you that first time. Because depending on the way you handle that situation for the very first time, is going to foresee if in the future they have the confidence to go up to you. So it's very important to pay attention to them and to not blame your son or daughter if they say they've been a victim of bullying. All right, and, and I think we have, uh, there are some, some different things you can say, like, you know, I'm here for you and so you're friends. Uh, are there any teachers at school that you can talk to? I guess someone they trust at school, is and, that a and good person? As a parent, it's always very important to tell your son or daughter if they don't have the confidence to come up to you, at least they have one adult in their life that they feel that they can trust and go up to. Because at the campuses, at the schools, we talk to the students and we encourage them to make the report to a parent, I mean an adult at home and an adult at school. So okay. we encourage the parents to be involved in the situation. Okay, and then this third one here, uh, this is a good way to bring it up without, uh, I guess, being too direct. Like I saw a news story about mm -hmm. a teen being bullied and then asking them their opinion. On That's that. good, That's no, good exactly. And you also as a parent, it's, all, it's always very good to ask, to talk about their friends. Ask them what they do. Ask them what, how, who do you hang out with during lunch? What do you do? You know, so it's very good to ask about the friends that they're associating with also. Okay, okay, very good. And uh, certainly if a parent has some questions, so where, where can they call, uh, I think, at your office if they have additional questions on that? If they have additional mm -hmm. questions, mm -hmm. they can feel free to contact 
971-1130. And you can ask for Jesus Martinez. Okay, 971-1130. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll, we'll have that for you at the end of the program as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, something you touched on earlier, the Olveus Prevention Program. Uh, tell us w what that is. I guess it's kind of a model that we follow. It's a model mm -hmm. that we follow, exactly, and it's a proven model. It's a model that's been utilized at other, in other states before and that McAllen decided to adopt. Um, to elaborate on the actual program is we train the teachers to be able to provide classroom meetings. So what the idea behind it is we want to be able to always have bullying in the forefront as part of the curriculum. Our, the goal is to be able to educate the, the students about once a week about what bullying is. So if we can keep this constantly going, the kids will know how to address and how to handle these situations. And it's, it, these classroom meetings are conducted and led by the teacher. Okay, so, so this isn't something we just touch on once at the beginning no. of the year and then we, we keep touching on it throughout the year with the kids. Exactly. Yeah. In previous history, a lot of programs generally touch about it once every six weeks. Mm -hmm. No, with the Ovea's Bullying Prevention Program, the idea is to keep it consistent. Okay. We, try to do it once, we try to do it every two weeks at the high school level, and we attempt to do it every week at the, at the elementary level. All right. And, and tell us a little bit about the, uh, the process we have at the campus level. Um, I, I know that, like, for mm -hmm. instance, you know, in the old days, uh, this might have been just handled uh, verbally by, by a mm -hmm. coach on the playground or something like that and then forgotten about it. But now, I mean, you have documentation that's part of the requirements now, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and what we do, the part of the process, uh, Mark, is we, if your son or daughter does come home and, and make the statement, Mom, Dad, you know, I've been ridiculed, I've been picked on, it's been going for so long and I'm, I can't put up with it anymore, we invite the parent that it's very important to let the teacher know, let the counselor know, Contact someone at the school district so they may, may be able to address the situation because a lot of times the children don't, don't do anything or mm -hmm. there's events where the children tell their parents but their parents think they let time pass by and they think it's gonna, the, the bullying is going to stop. And if it is actually occurring, it won't stop. Mm -hmm. So you have to allow the school ample time to be able to address the situation. And you had talked about earlier about the uh, part of the definition of bullying if, if, if it's recurring behavior. Exactly. So if you have documentation, someone can go back and check, has this been happening? Exactly, and at the mm -hmm. same time, with this program, the Ovea's Bullying Prevention Program, we want to be able to assist the individual who's being victimized, and we also want to assist the actual aggressor. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to actually find the positives in both situations, be able to build up their self-esteem for the actual victim and address the aggressor, because there might be okay. some further issues, and we want to be able to address it at a young age before it, might get to, before it becomes too late. Oh, yes. Uh, and that brings us to our, our bully prevention rules. So we have some rules there that uh, this is what we teach the kids at the campuses, uh, things like uh, you know, we will not bully, bully others, others and uh, help students who are bullied. Now, what does that mean, help students who are bullied? Well, if you see a situation as a student, if you see someone in the playground, someone in the lunch who's being made fun of, who they're isolating, we would like for the bystander to try to intervene, maybe sit next to him. If you actually witness the bullying going on, maybe step in and tell the guys, you know what, this isn't nice, guys, you know, let's let it out, cut it cool, you know. Things like that. That's what we're looking for from the by center to intervene, to try to help, include everyone together. So this isn't someone who's being bullied, but they're they witness yes. a bullying incident. They witness a bullying say. incident as a, and as opposed to just simply walking by mm -hmm. and not wanting to do anything. As we want them to be able to stop and actually get involved. I think you were telling me that that's, uh, I guess, a very common reaction is people immediately kind of shy away from the situation. It's, it is a very common reaction that they don't want to they don't want to get involved. Research does show that when bullying is occurring, 88% mm -hmm. of the time there are bystanders witnessing what is actually going on. So our, that's, that was very alarming and very concerning to us. So with, this, with the program of AIDS Bullying Prevention Program, we're trying to give them the tools to be able to intervene because a lot of in, in a lot of instances, the students said, well, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, what should I say? What should I do? Well, we understood that. So with the program, we're trying to give them the tools to be able to intervene and know what to do and how to react in certain situations. Okay, and, and I think you were telling me that a pretty high percentage uh, bullying incidents can be uh, can short circuited be, can be, right there. And can then. be deterred and short circuited exactly. Research does show that 67% of the time, when bystanders get involved, within 30 seconds, the bullying will stop. Wow, that's two out of three. Yes. Very good. And I suppose another uh, um, alternative for a child, if for whatever reason he doesn't want to intervene, should he go tell an adult? Exactly. If in the event a child doesn't feel comfortable, maybe into intervening we recommend that you go to an adult immediately and let them know what is, what is occurring. Okay, and then a couple of other points you have here on the uh, anti-bully rules, includes, include students who are left out. Exactly, an example of those, if you're in the playground and you see we're trying to make a team, 
you, you, you select a team and you see that one kid who wants to play, but you guys leave him out. Mm -hmm. You know, make an effort to try to get him involved. If you go to the lunch, you see a kid who's sitting at the end of the table by himself, try to get them involved. Don't isolate the individual. Try to have him involved with everyone. Introduce yourself. Introduce, introduce yourself. Your exactly. Very good. Yes. I mean, it, I guess, uh, you know, if children uh, as adults were able to do it a little bit better and kind of empathize and, yes. and you see someone and, and understand that the situation they're in and, and uh, think that, well, if someone had reached out to me and I felt that way, I would appreciate it and make exactly. that effort to reach out to them. And, and, and it's, it's yeah. contagious. And that's, that's the beauty behind this program. It's contagious. That behavior of actually introducing yourself, including everyone, other individuals see that. Mm -hmm. Once they see that, they, be, they understand that becomes the norm and it's accepted as opposed to the previous culture where we just looked, we, we observed bullying and we simply walked away. Mm -hmm. But now that we're seeing kids actually inter intervening, empowering them to do something about it, it's contagious and, uh, and the other kids will hopefully get involved. Now, now is this, uh, we've had this in place for now for about four years. Yes, Are you seeing a difference at the schools oh, in terms of discipline and issues and such? In, in terms of the bullying situations we have, uh, we, we conducted a survey at the beginning of the, the, the implementation of this program mm -hmm and we did a survey four years later to see if the actual if the bullying has reduced and there was a six percent reduction in, in the bullying reports after oh, four okay. years after implementing the program so yes we have seen a, a so change it's on the way down yes well good good so well, kids have the the tools to empower them yes. and hopefully like you said it becomes infectious and and everyone if they all implement that including uh, the campus and the parents at home and everybody yes, reinforcing it uh, it can all help eradicate this together uh, for questions uh, we also have our police dispatch number because you're all technically under the police department yes, uh, 632-8768 you can always call that number for questions uh, to report a bully incident though what do you suggest a parent do we suggest a parent go to the campus of okay. course we would like for you to notify the teacher so the teacher can make an attempt to address the situation. If as a parent you feel that they weren't able to address the situation, we ask you to go to the counselor or address it to the principal if it has to get to that situation. Okay, yeah, definitely uh, let your, your campus know about it. Uh, if you're aware of something, even if it's uh, not your child, you're mm -hmm. aware of something going on, definitely exactly. bring it to the campus's attention. And some other resources that might interest you if you want to uh, brush, an, brush up on this subject matter some, we have safeyouth.gov safeyouth.gov, also stopbullying.gov, uh, some good resources at those two websites. So again, uh, check that out. You can call the uh, Jesus anytime if you have yes. questions about bully prevention, and also you call your campus and to report any kind of uh, bullying that you know of that's going on. So I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank Jesus Martinez, thank our guest today. Thank you for coming on, the Prevention Intervention Specialist for McAllen ISD, and we'll see you next time right here on FYI. Now it's time for This Week in Bad Stats. Bad stats? Horrible stats. Here goes. 260. That's how many runs were walked in with the bases loaded last season. Wow, very good. Here's a tough one, though. Three and four. No idea. That's the number of kids who witness bullying. Three out of four. Not a good stat. No, it's not, but that can change. Kids want to help, but they don't know how. You can visit StopBullying.gov and give them the tools they need to help prevent bullying. There are plenty of safe ways kids can help at StopBullying.gov. No es su nuevo grupo de amigos. No son los videojuegos. No es el barrio. Mamá, tengo que ir a la escuela hoy. La mayor amenaza al futuro de sus hijos podría ser usted misma. Cada día que faltan a la escuela, incluso a la escuela media, pone en peligro su graduación. You're watching MITV. McAllen Instructional Television. ¿Qué tal estamos en Pláticas Escolares? Mi nombre es Juan Carlos García y conmigo se encuentra Jesús Martínez que nos va a hablar acerca de la prevención del acoso escolar. Jesús, platícanos un poquito acerca de este tema tan importante que es el acoso escolar. Primero, gracias Juan, te quiero agradecer mucho por invitarme aquí para hablar de los padres hoy de algo muy importante. Primeramente a los padres, es que déjame la definición de qué es acoso escolar. Hay varios elementos que van a ver para poder decir si es bullying o no es bullying. Una cosa que tenemos que ver, tiene que ver un acto de agresividad sobre una persona. 
bueno, ese acto puede ser verbal, puede ser físico o puede ser en la, en la meta de cyberbullying por el internet. Otra cosa que tenemos que ver, tenemos que ver si se está repitiendo ese comportamiento de agresividad. Y tercero, tenemos que ver si hay un balance de poder, que la persona no se puede defender y le está afectando en, 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 la, en la escuela, académicamente. Jesús, el acoso, el más conocido que hay ahorita es el cyberbullying, el acoso sobre el internet. ¿Qué, qué es el acoso en el internet? Bueno, Está, está subiendo el, el, el acoso escolar sobre el cyberbullying porque todavía el, el tradicional del físico y verbal, ese sigue siendo lo más común, pero está creciendo mucho más el cyberbullying. El problema que estamos teniendo con el cyberbullying es un niño, no se termina el bullying, el, el acoso escolar no se termina en la escuela, lo sigue en la casa, porque la mayoría de los niños cuando llegan a la casa están en el Facebook, están en ciertas aplicaciones y ahí es cuando otros niños le están escribiendo, le están poniendo cosas muy, muy dañosas sobre ellos y le está afectando la autoestima a los, a los estudiantes. Definitivamente bien importante. Jesús, ¿cómo podemos prevenir todo esto? Es algo difícil, pero fácil a la misma vez. Siempre dijimos a los padres que pongan mucha atención a lo que están, a lo que están haciendo sus hijos en, en la computadora. Es muy importante de estar vigila, vigilando lo que están haciendo y preguntarles cada cuando, mi hijo o mi hija, ¿qué estás haciendo? Déjame ver lo que estás haciendo. Es muy importante que hagan eso. A la misma vez, si su hijo algo le está pasando, es muy importante que él comunicas con su hijo. Escúchalos, ¿qué le está pasando? Muy importante la comunicación con su hijo o su hija. ¿Cuál es la supervisión que las escuelas están dando para todo esto, lo que es el, el acoso escolar? Sí, sí. Un, un prevención que está haciendo la escuela, está adaptando un programa que se llama Obey's Bullying Prevention Program. La idea de ese programa es tratar de cambiar la clima de la escuela y la cultura. Otra cosa con ese programa, queremos darle el poder a los niños o a los, a los estudiantes que, que tengan el poder de que digan algo. Si ven un niño que lo están molestando, que lo están intimidando, que tengan el poder y saben qué hacer para ayudarle o defender a esa persona. ¿Alguna póliza, algunas reglas que existen en las escuelas? Sí, claro que sí. Esas reglas no nomás existen en las escuelas, existen en el estado. So, por, eso es muy importante que, por eso es muy importante que las escuelas sigan las reglas. Varias reglas pueden ser... Si sabes que un niño lo están molestando, repórtalo inmediatamente con el maestro, con el consejera, con el principal o cualquier adulto en la escuela. ¿Cuál es el proceso? Si, si yo soy alumno, sí, sí. ¿qué es el proceso que tiene, se tiene que tomar para poder eh, atacar lo que sí, es sí. El, 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 proceso es, el El proceso es muy simple. Si, si te están molestando como estudiante, primera cosa que te vamos a decir, avísale a un adulto en la casa. Después de que le avises a un adulto en la casa, queremos que le avises un adulto en la escuela. Preferible maestra, puede ser coach, puede ser consejero, pero avísale para que ellos puedan comenzar a ayudar a la situación. Eh, algo para los alumnos de los pequeños, los, los que están a mediana edad y los adultos, algunas reuniones, meetings, rallies que hagan ustedes para sí. eh, enseñarles lo que es la importancia del acoso escolar. Sí, es, es lo que hace la escuela. Con la el, el, el idea de la OBS Bullying Prevention Program es darle a los maestros el, 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 el información para poder educar a los niños. En, en regreso, los niños van a saber cómo combatir el acoso escolar. Eso es lo que queremos, eso es lo que están haciendo los maestros, educando a los niños. Una vez a la semana, pl tienen pláticas en las clases sobre qué es bullying, cómo se ve, qué es lo que tienen que hacer. So, cuando un estudiante, un alumno ve lo que está pasando, ellos saben inmediatamente qué es lo que tienen que hacer. Como padres, ¿cómo podemos ayudar, Jesús? Como padres, Juan, es muy importante como padres escuchar a su hijo o su hija. Si su hija o su hija le dice, mamá, papá, me está pasando eso, es muy importante que lo escucha y que no lo, no lo, no lo culpa. Por la, no, lo, no lo culpa que, y digas, es tu culpa que te está pasando eso. No, es muy importante que lo escuches y que hagas algo. Si no hay comunicación entre padre e hijo, ¿cuál sería la mejor manera de...? Si tal vez no hay comunicación con el hijo o el padre, le digamos a los, a los estudiantes que hable con un maestro un adulto en la escuela. Pues definitivamente. Disculpa, y que ellos hablen por el niño. Definitivamente muy importante. Vamos a regresar. Seguimos platicando acerca del de acoso escolar. Estamos con Jesús Martínez. Regresamos en un momento a Pláticas Escolares. Every day, kids witness bullying. For you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. It's not his new group of friends, the video games, or the neighborhood. Mom, 
Do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss puts their graduation at risk. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Regresamos a pláticas escolares. Conmigo se encuentra Jesús Martínez, especialista de prevención sí, bueno. del acoso escolar. Jesús, mencionaste acerca del programa Ovejas. ¿Me puedes decir un poquito acerca de este programa? Sí, sí. El, el, déjame darle más información sobre el programa Ovejas. La idea del programa Ovejas es, como mencioné más temprano, queremos darle el poder al estudiante para tratar de intervenir cuando ve una situación de acoso escolar. Bueno, es muy importante darle las tragedias y las propio información para poder combatir este problema. Una cosa que estamos haciendo es los maestros están teniendo juntas con los estudiantes una vez a la semana y en los, con los niños más grandes lo están teniendo dos veces a la semana y tienen pláticas que, de, que es bullying y aparte de las pláticas les dan información de qué es lo que tienen que hacer si lo ven en las escuelas. Jesús, como maestro, como padre, ¿cómo te puedes dar cuenta que tu hijo está sufriendo de acoso escolar? Eso es algo muy importante, les digo a los padres, muy importante es que le pongan atención a sus hijos. Hay ciertos cambios que van a hacer. Obvio que hay cambios que van a hacer porque están creciendo, pero hay cambios que conoces en un hijo, por ejemplo, bajo grados. Se está quejando mucho de cosas que le están doliendo, tal vez porque tiene miedo de ir a la escuela. Ya se pone muy agresivo con usted porque tal vez le está pasando algo en la escuela. Hay unos cambios que está pasando que es muy importante como papá y mamá que pongan mucha atención. Jesús. ¿Y cuánto, cuánto tiempo tienen implementando el programa de OVEAS aquí en el Distrito Escolar de Macalé? El distrito ya tiene más o menos cuatro años implementando este programa OVEAS. Y desde que lo implementaron, hicieron una encuesta del principio del, 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 del programa. Y des, cuatro años después, hicieron otra encuesta. Y se ha bajado 6% puntos, se ha bajado, el, 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 se, ha, se ha reducido, es culpa, el acoso escolar. So, estamos viendo que sí está funcionando el programa. Jesús, ¿alguna pregunta, algún comentario que los padres tengan? ¿A qué número pueden llamar? Un número que les recomiendo que llamen a los papás va a ser el 971-1130 y pueden preguntar por Jesús Martínez. Y ahí yo les puedo dar más información sobre si no saben qué hacer o cómo hacer un reporte, yo les puedo dar más información sobre eso. Lo más rápido es que alumno, el alumno sí, claro vaya que a la sí. escuela. Lo más rápido será papá, alumno, que vayan directamente a la escuela. Jesús, ¿alguna página de internet que también los padres puedan utilizar o el igual los mismos alumnos? Eso estamos, en el momento estamos trabajando en eso. Eh, para los principios del año que venga, que será 2014, 2015, te, queremos tener una página para darle reporte y darle más información a los padres. O so, esperan eso un poquito más tiempo y vamos a tener eso para el año que venga. Y también eh, me comentaron que hay páginas del gobierno como safeyouth.gov claro. y stopbullying.gov que también pueden... Buscar información y uh -huh. a, a buscar ayuda, ¿no? Y les, les invito a los padres que se meten en el internet, como dijo Juan ahorita, y, y, y escriban el nombre a cosas escolar o bullying, y ahí van a salir mucha información que usted puede obtener. Definitivamente un tema súper importante claro. que está sucediendo en nuestras escuelas. Así es, Jesús, muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. Esto fue Pláticas Escolares. Mi nombre fue Carlos García. Hasta la próxima. You're watching MITV. McAllen Instructional Television.